I'm going to be reading Rufus Comes Home, a book for newly diagnosed children with type 1 diabetes. Written by Kim Goslin, illustrated by Terry Ravinelli. Rufus Comes Home. I know. It's so cute. I love it. I know. Okay. Brian felt very sick. For quite a few weeks, he felt weak, tired, thirsty, and seemed to be going to the bathroom all the time. Brian didn't feel like himself at all. Brian's family took him to the doctor to try to find out why he felt so sick. His doctor told his family she thought Brian might have a condition called diabetes. She sent them all to the hospital right away. Brian's family doctor had been right. Soon after he got to the hospital, special diabetes doctors and nurses checked his blood for extra sugar, glucose with a blood glucose meter. Brian pricked his finger. The nurse helped him touch a drop of his blood to the test sensor. The test sensor drew the blood right away from Brian's finger and they waited for the meter to beep. They also took some blood from his arm and sent it to a laboratory for tests. Sure enough, Brian had too much sugar in his blood. Brian learned that having diabetes meant his body could not turn the extra sugar in his blood into the energy his body needed. That's why Brian had felt so sick and tired all the time during the last few weeks. Brian discovered that when his diabetes was not in good range, like when he got to the hospital, he felt real sick. His body made him go to the bathroom a lot because it was trying to get rid of all the extra sugar it had in it. People without diabetes have something their bodies make called insulin that takes care of all of that kind of stuff. Insulin is a hormone that is made by cells in a part of the body called the pancreas. The pancreas is near the stomach. Having diabetes meant that Ryan's pancreas didn't make enough of the insulin called or the hormone called insulin anymore. Halfway done. Because Ryan's body didn't make enough insulin, he and his family had to learn a lot about what having diabetes would mean in their lives. For example, to take the place of insulin Brian's body no longer made, he learned that he had to take shots every day. Usually Brian would get two or more shots a day. At first Brian didn't like the idea of getting shots every day. Who would? But after a while he got the insulin, he felt so much better. Brian and his family learned more and more about diabetes every day. They learned from diabetes teachers in the hospital that it was best if Brian ate his meals and snacks about the same time each day. It was very important for his family to have a regular schedule each and every day, even when Brian went to school or played sports. By the way, side note, in 2017, there's no schedule required with type 1. Get on a pump and it's smooth sailing from there. Not being on a regular schedule when you're on injections, might I add, or not eating when he was supposed to could make Brian get sick. He learned all about highs when his body had too much sugar in his blood and all about lows when he didn't have enough sugar in his body to balance the insulin from his shot. Lows meant Brian needed to get some sugar and food in his body right away. Brian wished he knew someone else who had diabetes. He knew he could always count on his family to talk about and share his feelings, and of course his doctors and nurses too. Still, as much as they all wanted to help, they didn't have diabetes like Brian did they. 
Brian longed for someone or something special to share his private diabetes feelings with. After practicing giving shots to oranges in the hospital, Brian's mother kissed him goodbye. She had a, a few errands to catch up on before Brian's family brought him home from the hospital. Besides, his grandma was with him too, and grandma was happy to sit and talk with him until Brian's mother got back from the hospital. It felt good to have grandma there with him. After finishing her errands, Brian's mother quickly stopped by a toy store to find a special surprise to take back to the hospital for Brian. Finally, his mother's bright green eyes spotted the perfect little teddy bear friend for Brian. Warm, cuddly, stuffed teddy bear sat lonely on the toy shelf waiting for someone to love. Brian's mother knew it would be a great loved bear for Brian. Brian's mother dropped off a few things at home and then realized there were just a few more things to do before she went back to the hospital. Brian's mother remembered what her son had told her earlier, that he wished he had a special someone or something to share his private diabetes feelings with. Brian's mother thought the new bear might be the perfect listener for him. Brian's mother gently and lovingly hand-sewed a few patches on different parts of the bear's body in the same exact spots where Brian would now have to give his insulin shots. She carefully cut out little red felt hearts and sewed them on the bear's paws where Brian Hound had to do his pricking his finger. Finally, the finishing touch. A little diabetes t-shirt from the JRF now fit him just right on the bear. Now the bear was with diabetes was perfect, just like Brian. After a few hours, Brian's mom hurried back to the hospital where she found him and his grandma playing a board game. Now that Brian was getting insulin in his body that he needed, he was almost back to his old self for the first time in a long time. Brian was smiling. Brian's mother handed Brian a great big bag with a red bow on it. Inside was Brian's special new bear. Brian pulled it out and hugged it with all his might. He named the bear Rufus, the bear with diabetes, right away. Brian couldn't wait until he could show his diabetes doctors and nurses his new bear. As soon as they came into the room, he showed them how he could not only test his own blood, but now Rufus's as well. Soon it was time for Brian's shot. This time, it wasn't nearly so bad. Brian got to give his insulin shot first, then Rufus got his shot too. This was a lot more fun than practicing on an orange. This book is a lot longer than I thought it was gonna be. Finally, it was time for Brian and Rufus to go home. As soon as they got to Brian's house, they found a special place for all of Brian's and Rufus's diabetes supplies. Soon, the whole family settled into their new routine. Whatever Brian did, Rufus did too. Late that night, when everyone is in bed and the house is all dark and quiet, a tiny, small voice could be faintly heard coming from Brian's bedroom. Brian's mother could hear her son whispering to his new friend Rufus something deep in her heart. She knew that was Rufus was a special something that could really understand Brian and his private diabetes thoughts. Reassuring words could be heard echoing late into the night. A small boy and an even smaller bear somehow understood each other.
Brian's mother finally peacefully closed her eyes gently, fell asleep for the first time in many, many nights. Yes, everything would be all right. The end. Cheers.